Um, our last speaker today is Marita Growing Thunder, a member of the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux Tribes of Eastern Montana. Marita is an activist, she's a leader, she's a clothing designer, and a sophomore at the University of Montana, Missoula. She was raised on the Flathead Indian Reservation by her mother, Shannon Haiti. In high school, Marita designed, sewed, and wore a traditional dress every school day to honor a missing or murdered indigenous woman or girl. She has today, um, on, uh, she is wearing today um, a dress, a traditional dress that she sewed and designed herself. She will speak to us about Save Our Sisters, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Welcome. Hatso by Gontongya. I'm a, my name, uh, to reiterate, my name is Marita Growing Thunder and I'm enrolled to Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux, but I'm also Kaiwa and Comanche from my mother's side. And I'm here to represent this project that I started in high school. I started the Save Our Sisters Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls project, um, which originally started as a dress project. Um, in 2016, I went to a high school art program for just students who are interested in art. And I, by the end of the program, they wanted the, the organizers had wanted each student to go back to their home communities and um, start their own projects called art advocacy projects. And so that's, is, that's kind of where it started. I, I had this dream while I was attending this this art program and I had a dream that I was at this powwow and there was nobody there. I, I was walking through this really dark powwow. I heard I, I could see camps. There was there was life that was happening, but it was not present. And when I got to this arbor in my dream, I just saw these dresses and that kind of just stuck with me since that program. I had seen projects such as the Red Dress Project before, and I was seeing articles on Facebook. This, and that was what was inspiring to me. And I talked to my advisors at this program, and they kind of were hesitant in terms of what I wanted to discuss. I called my mother, and I called my mother the very next day after I had that dream. And I remember that there was a silence between us. Her voice was really shaky, and I, I had mentioned that I wanted to talk about missing and murdered indigenous women. And I knew that the, the movement was already so big in Canada, but there was nothing here in the United States to really show for wanting to discuss this issue. And that silence that was held between my mother and I in that phone call, I knew that this issue had hit close to home, but we were also not alone. I had originally planned to create my own powwow to, I guess, to reenact what I had seen in my dream or, but I, I did not have like the business mindset. I, I went into this art program playing the trombone. I left making dresses. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it all it, it, I, on the first day of school, I, I just showed up in, in one of my outfits. My mother had helped me make a, my very first ribbon skirt and ribbon shirt, that, or a shirt that matched the ribbon skirt. And it was the, the first time I had ever done anything like that and, uh, in terms of making a ribbon skirt or, or a, and a shirt that had matched. I kind of I didn't necessarily plan what I was going to do and how I was going to 
exactly follow through or I didn't know if I should have followed through or if I was doing the wrong thing. All I know is that I was going to do it at that moment. So this is this picture. I was this this is actually a dress that I wore at powwows to dance. I dance southern traditional and I, I at first I started out wearing the dresses that I originally owned and that I danced in when my when my family powwowed a lot more often. Then it started then I started making dresses because I, not only because I ran out of dresses to, to wear but to also dedicate to missing and murdered indigenous women. So why I started this project, this picture is of my mother and my aunt Yvonne, who was murdered when I was eight. Yvonne was Osage, and she had two children. My mother was really close with her, and they went to powwows together. They grew up together, and every time I talk to my mother, she always seems to bring up Yvonne or something that reminded her of her, like, I, I got this text message the other day, and my mother was just mentioning about how her buckskin dress had, was covered in a Windex stain because her sister Yvonne had sat in Windex. And every time she sees that stain, every time somebody puts on my mother's dress, she thinks of Yvonne. Here's some other pictures. She really loved to powwow. She really loved to dance be with my mother. So going back into the dedications, I started sewing my ribbon dresses. What I'm wearing today is a ribbon skirt and a top that matches. I started making these and dedicating them to each, to, to a woman starting out with my family and then going into the community of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes of Montana. Um, ribbon skirts, ribbon work, everybody, has their own different styles of ribbon work or applique styles. It's different for different people, but I made, some people prefer conservative looks with less ribbons. Some people prefer more contemporary, more, more ribbons, more colors. It's, it varies, but I made mine more extravagant while I was in high school because I felt that it was important to understand that these women were deserving of such extra extravagant looks and that they were denied this. When I was dressing, I didn't really stop to think about what I was doing could possibly be illegal until recently. There was a house bill that just passed in Montana uh, which mentioned that no, no organization can prevent any native person from wearing their regalia at a public event. And that was just within the last six months or so. And I didn't think about the fact that I could have been kicked out or expelled from high school for wearing these dresses. And even historically, I dressed because of the fact that my grandparents were denied this when they entered boarding school. And that this was, it's kind of re-owning the fact that I could do this now. These are some other dresses um, that I made. The purple one on the left was for Raylan Marie Charlot. She was, uh, she worked at this place called Kicking Horse Job Corps. And I remember when this happened, I, mean, I was 15 and it was such a shock because my mother had, had known her a little bit. She, my mother had worked at the time. She was giving out high sets to people who um, didn't have their high school diplomas yet. And this woman, Ray Lynn, had happened to work with my mother and it was, it was really, really, really hard um, seeing as how she was a member of the community. And the one on the right is for Misty Ann Upham whose cousin Leilani had approached me with this um, with this idea that I should dedicate a dress or a skirt to her in honor of Misty. So in this picture, you can see that there's a lake and that's, that's the Flathead Lake um, for, on the Flathead Indian Reservation. And just a little background information where I'm from, there was a lot of white supremacy in every single space that I was in. 
And so there was, it was already not a friendly place to begin with. Um, and there, there's, a, there's like a KKK group on, on the reservation where I grew up. And so this had already placed a lot of a, a, a really tense division between me and the school. Um, but going back to this, here's another dedication. Going back to this and being alone in a sense, I had asked people to dress or people had insisted to dress with me. And so there's another student, her name is Kylie Bigbow. Um, and she had actually joined me while I was in high school and she dressed as well. I collected over a hundred different stories from people. I, I, I have not met a family who this hasn't affected. And it came from like most shocking people. You know, I was at a powwow and there's this family friend who came up to us after this one special that I had for missing and murdered indigenous women and he talked about his sister. And it was never something that you, it, he talked about his sister for the first time ever publicly and you never would have guessed it. You never, you can never see this pain. And so there's some, there's some other people from the community, Shelley Wall. And then the community, even though I'm not of the Salish or Kootenai tribes, the CSKT Tribal Preservation actually joined us, as well as the Salish Kootenai College, which is a tribal college on the Flathead Indian Reservation. Um, they started dressing every week along with me. Um, so then I, it goes to this big walk. I'm not, like I said in the beginning, I was not very diligent in planning thoroughly. <laughs> I kind of did things by gut feeling. And when spring break approached my senior year of high school, I decided to walk 80 miles uh, for, and 80 miles straight um, for four days. I kind of want to talk about like the modern, modernized physical sacrifice. Historically, there is a sun dance where people go endure all of this pain for spiritual reasons. And I wanted to walk and go through that pain because I felt that it was, it would help with understanding why I might feel this way. And the first day was always the most physically painful because I, first of all, I didn't train, but, but it was always the, it's always the worst physically painful day. But the last day is the last day of every walk is the most emotionally painful day. I remember after the first year on the first walk, I was able to tell my mother things that I could never tell her before. And same with her. There were people from the community who just came out and walked with us. And if they, if they couldn't walk, then we walked for them. And then on a side note, Next week, a week from today, I will be walking again for the third year. Um, so here's some community members. My best friend's mother joined us. She's the one on the left. And then there's Miss Brianna Lamb, who is an activist for missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, and there would just be lines of people and we just walked on the highway and we'd, We'd start in Rollins, Montana, which is near Kalispell, Montana, which is the northern border of the Flathead Indian Reservation, and we just walk all the way down to the southern border, which is in Evero, Montana, and that's about 80, 80 to 90 miles um, south. But on our way down, we'd stop at the immersion school for Salish, for Salish people, uh, Nikusum, and Last year, there was a tribal elder of the, and he talked about his own sister who went missing in the 40s, and he still lived with that. He was about, he was in his 90s by the time he 
came up and told us about his sister. He's not in this photo, but um, this is the school that he worked at. Um, these children in this photo, they were, they joined us about a mile away from their school and walked with us on the highway. Yeah. So when doing all of this, it was just what felt right at the moment to bring up the discussion within my family and within the community and Overall, in the state of Montana, I've been contacted by a few people um, to work with them in the state Senate. And it's right now we have Hannah's Act, which is um, a demand that Native people have a, special, a specialist in working with missing persons cases in, Indi in Indian country. Um, and then there's also the Confederated Salish Kootenai Tribes, which is where I grew up, CSKT. They have their own special, um, they're doing their own work in terms of addressing this issue um, collectively. So in, I have a letter that my mother had wrote to her sister, and that's what I would like to do to, or use to conclude with. Dear Yvonne, it's the 4th of July and I put my buckskin dress on Moo Moo. I'm the Moo. I had to adjust the skirt to fit her and I was shaking it out and I saw the blue stain on the bum. I was so mad. I was so mad at you for sitting in Windex while wearing my dress, but now I touch it and remember how you cried when you gave it back to me. That's what I have left of you. A blue stain on my dress. I trade a thousand dresses just to have you back. I have so much guilt for not being there. When things got hard, I didn't know. I feel so selfish for being caught up in my own world. Yours was just falling apart. I never got to say goodbye. My last memory of you is happy. Just you, me, and hope. I wish I had a way to go back and pay attention to what was happening. I'm so sorry. I miss you so much it hurts. I talk to Art about you and Glenn. My heart hurts so bad. It's so unfair. I love you more than words. For a split second, I forget that you're gone. Then I can't see through my tears. Thank you. Thank you, Marita, and good luck um, on your third long walk. <laughs>